everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to be discussing five types of play that I recommend for people who are new to BDSM. And regardless if you're someone who's interested in getting started because you're a masochist or a sadist or a pet or a little or even if you think you're a switch, there should be something on this list that sparks your curiosity. I try my best to get something from across all the different ranges of the BDSM SM spectrum, but this is definitely not a complete list. This is just a way to kind of get your ideas started and kind of figure out how you want to start introducing BDSM into your life. I have an entire channel dedicated to BDSM, so if you want to learn more about some of the things that I mentioned here, or you want to learn more about BDSM in general, be sure to check out the rest of my channel, and in particular, the links down in the description box for the most relevant topics I've discussed previously. All right, and let's go ahead and get started with my first recommendation, which is Velcro restraints. This is my number one recommendation for anybody who expresses interest in bondage of any kind, be that rope bondage, tight rope bondage, scarves, chains, handcuffs, anything like that, the first step I think that you should take before you invest in all the other material is Velcro restraints. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is they're cheap and easy to find. If you go on Amazon, if you go to even most vanilla sex toy stores, you are going to be able to find Velcro restraints of some kind, be they just things for around the arms, stuff for around the legs. Sometimes you can even find like a full bodysuit made out of Velcro restraints. The one kind I would stay away from is the sort where it's like it goes around the neck like this and the Velcro is in the back because that can cause pressure and in a panic situation, it can be hard to take off the Velcro, but in general, Velcro is very safe and it's very easy to take off. A lot of people who are new to BDSM don't realize exactly what the feeling of being restrained is going to do to them or their partner men mentally. And it can seem really hot in theory, and then suddenly you get into it and you panic. And the reason why Velcro restraints are good is that it's easy to take off. You can take it off, a partner can take it off. If something happens, you don't have to fumble around for keys. If a paramedic or a neighbor stops by, they're not gonna have any trouble undoing you if it's an emergency situation. And again, they're also comfortable and they're also cheap. So it's a really good way to get the feeling of bondage without making a big investment. You're not risking something cutting into the skin like handcuffs and they're just really good all-purpose all-around tools that you can keep in your tool bag for BDSM as you continue to grow in your kinky journey. A second recommendation for people who are interested in BDSM is role play. Now when you get more into the BDSM community and you start meeting people who are what are called lifestylers and you meet people who are in 24-7 power exchange relationships, you will find people who debate whether or not it's all role play, if it's fantasy, if it's real, if it's make believe, and that's a whole other conversation. But I think regardless of what you're interested in doing in BDSM, if you're a masochist, a sadist, a pet, a little, anything like that, a great foundation to start with is trying out role play. Because it's something that a lot of people already do during intimate activities with their partner. It's very accessible and it's very, very easy to find things for. You can do anything from nurse doctor role play or nurse patient role play, pet and owner role play, age play, all sorts of different things. It can be anything, anything that you can think of, teacher, professor, soccer coach, anything can be something that you role play because really what role play is, is just pretending to be something that you're not. And it can seem cheesy and it can seem kind of tired and played out, but just pick up some simple props. You can take a trip to the Halloween store. I recommend going when everything is on sale immediately following Halloween and just pick up a bunch of different stuff to play with and see what kind of feels right to you. I find for some people who are interested in BDSM but are nervous and nervous about the way that it might affect their identity or their personal life or their relationship with a partner, temporarily stepping into a role, even just very, very casual costume based role play or just fantasy can be something that's very securing and can help somebody make the transition between 
sort of normal vanilla life and what's kind of been normal into more of a BDSM headspace. And as you get more into BDSM, you may find that adopting some of these headspaces, some of these different forms of role play that you're learning how to use are very helpful to get into the sorts of feelings that you enjoy most about participating in BDSM. And it's relatively low risk. You're just playing a role. You can take the costumes off anytime that you want. All right, and we're on to my third recommendation for people who are new to BDSM, and that is sensation play. Sensation play is one of my favorite types of play in BDSM because there's so many different sensations that you can play with. Hearing, smell, taste, touch, all of that can be used to enhance intimacy and to start exploring you and your partner's bodies in a new way. And it's very accessible. Again, all these things I'm going to be recommending are meant to be accessible. You're not going to have to go out and spend $300 on a bondage set to be able to do anything that I'm going to be recommending today. So just look around your house. Feather duster? That totally works. Ice cubes? You bet. The back of a cold spoon? Awesome. Just look around and see what different textures and different smells, different things you just have around the house that maybe you've never really thought of before. And maybe you caress them over your partner's back, or you rub their lips against a cold ice cube, or maybe you stroke the back of their neck with a feather, or maybe their sides so you see if they're a little bit ticklish. It's really just a good way to practice building intimacy and trust as a baseline for a BDSM relationship in a way that's very non-intimidating and non-threatening. Because not only is it accessible financially, it's not going to be something that's going to leave you with bruises. It's not probably going to be painful. It's something that's relatively easy to recover from. And unless you're accidentally using something that your partner is allergic to, you're relatively safe in terms of causing any sort of long-term mental damage to your partner if you're just doing something like a simple sensation play scene. And it's something you can build on too. It's something you can take with you when you start experimenting more with pain play, when you start experimenting more with sensory deprivation, all of those things are really great. You can definitely also incorporate sensory deprivation specifically into this. Something like earplugs work great, very simple, easy to find, a very simple like sleep mask for a blindfold. You don't need to buy anything specifically BDSM related, just a simple sleep mask will work, very easy to take off, and it provides your partner with a way to enhance their experiences of the sensation because part of their senses are being blocked off, which is making the sense of touch or whatever senses are remaining more intense. I did mention masochists at the beginning of this video, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention at least one kind of pain-based play. So for number four, let's talk about spanking. Spanking is the quintessential form of impact play in BDSM. Rarely will you find somebody who bottoms to pain play who has never tried spanking before. It's relatively easy, it's accessible, it just uses your hands, it's not that complicated, and it's a lot more intuitive than other forms of impact play like say caning or flogging, because again, you're just using your hands. What you really need to be mindful of when you're spanking is how much force you're using, and the exact locations where you're hitting. You can't just go like and like smack as hard as you can. Please do not do that. Please use some thought process when you are going to be slapping at a partner. It is generally something that's done on the actual bottom itself, not done like above on the tailbone, avoid the bone, maybe a little bit on the very, very upper thigh, but keep it till the actual like meat of the bottom. Just, just play it safe and listen to your partner's responses. Get constant feedback. Just go slow. Don't move your hand like super far back from the body. Just kind of almost like you're tapping <laughs> is kind of a good way to start even. And you can vary the shape of your hand. So maybe it's curved around the shape of the bottom or completely flat or your fingers are spread or maybe you're wearing gloves or your partner is wearing panties or full clothing. Plenty of ways that you can play with the intensity and the sensation but it's really up to you and your partner to kind of get feedback and see what feels right. I don't think this is really something you need to take classes on just to kind of get a sense of how it works. But if you want to read more about spanking and get kind of more insight into actual spanking techniques, because this is just a general overview of what spanking is. This is not a tutorial because I am not a top and I cannot explain spanking for you. I definitely recommend the lover's guide to spanking, I think it's called. I will link it down below. Please check that out. It is an amazing guide to all things related to spanking and caning if you want to learn more. 
So for my last suggestion, I was thinking of doing something that was more power exchange focused because I know a lot of you are very interested in power exchange. But doing any kind of power exchange, at least for me, can be very, very personal. It can be difficult to communicate and it can be difficult to negotiate. So I don't always recommend it for people who are completely new to the scene. But if you want just a little teeny taste of what it's like to do power exchange, what I can recommend is using a collar and a leash. And I think anything is more symbolic of BDSM, and in particular, dominant and submissive relationships than somebody wearing a collar on a leash. You can buy them at dog stores, you can buy them at sex toy stores, you can buy them online on specialized BDSM shops. And honestly, it doesn't really matter where you get your first collar from, so long as the materials are not something that your partner's allergic to and it fits right. Two fingers is what you wanna aim for, by the way, just in case you were wondering. And it's something that is just, once you put it on, if you're a submissive person, a lot of us will have this like moment of like, this is my life, this is what I meant to be. Not that that will always happen for you, but I find that many people, the moment of having a collar put on is just like, woo, this is my life. <laughs> How interesting. And it feels like you're kind of becoming closer to yourself. And being able to put a collar on somebody can be a very moving, very powerful experience if you are somebody who is leaning more towards the D side of things. I also recommend using a leash with this because I think that's another way beyond just the collar that you can incorporate this into a casual basic scene that is simple to do. The only thing that you really need to make sure you're doing is make sure you are pulling from the front of the collar so the pressure is on the back of the neck rather than the front. Because if you yank from behind, this part of the throat is very delicate. So you probably don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, just FYI. Don't, do, please don't, this part of the body, if you don't remember anything else from the video, this is dangerous and delicate. Don't mess with this, please, until you can learn more about anatomy and get some more skills. Just be cautious and careful. Don't like yank your partner on the leash. Go on a casual rock around the living room. Have them wear a leash while they are doing dishes or folding the laundry. Bring a leash with you and keep it in a purse while you're going out grocery shopping. Tons of ways that you can use it. And it's a really great way, again, of getting that little tiny taste of power exchange. All right, well, that is all of the recommendations that I have for you guys. Please just remember that there are a lot more skills that I didn't talk about here, like negotiation and introducing your partner to BDSM and all of that great stuff. So if you wanna know about those things, do check out the videos in the description box down below. They are going to be super, super helpful if you have no idea what you're doing. And even if you do, maybe get a little bit of a refresher. One thing I do want to mention is regardless of what type of play you choose to go into, always make sure you're communicating with your partner, you are giving feedback, not going past somebody's limits. Do things in very small, time-limited ways, three, five, ten minutes. That's all you really need to do in order to be able to get started in this lifestyle. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. If you want to see more from me, do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. And if you like this video, do let me know down below. Comment if you have any questions. All my social media links are in the description box below. If you want to support my channel because you really like this video and you want to see more content, best place to do that is on Patreon. Thank you so, so much if you already support. Thank you so much for being here. And until I see you guys next time, hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.